Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera to all. So today we we'll learn about interrupts. This is a module level. So in the interrupt here, you will learn about interrupt and polling. What are the interrupt unit? How to step in executing the interrupt? How to enable and disable the interrupts? How to use the interrupt? And how to do a interrupt programming? Okay, so let's look at the intro introduction of interrupt first and then after that we, we continue with programming right so a single micro p can serve several device tasks at the same time there are two methods by which device receive a service from micro p first we call it as an interrupt the second one we call it as a polling so what are the difference between interrupt and polling so the interrupt, whenever any device need the microfish service, the device notifies by sending an interrupt signal. So it means that every time you run a program and that device want to need to a microfish service to do, for example, to do a data processing, for example, so that device will notify the will let notifies the micro P by sending an interrupt signal so upon receiving an interrupt signal micro P stop whatever it is doing and serve to that device so and then program associated with the interrupt call interrupt service routine or interrupt handler and do the this the do the what we call here the task that are sending by that device so while polling the micro p continuously monitor the status of a given device when the status is met it performs the service okay so after that it moves on to a monitor the next device until each uh, one of its services okay so to make it short interrupt actually if you have two what we call here two tasks okay so you have a task a and task b all right so task a let's lah you want to count from one to nine and task b you want to do a led blinking four times okay you want to do a led blinking four times all right so on off on off on off four times okay this one here is at your task which is you want to count from one to nine okay so let's this is your main task while this one here become your interrupt task so what happen is okay when you currently do the counting okay let's you want to do a counting so now it's count from one two three four okay suddenly okay task b sending an interrupt signal to micro p so that in the middle of the task a you are going to do a task b you want to uh, do a led blinking four times what happen is so task a Okay, so this is a task A and this task. Task A will stop. Okay, so here it will stop. So my copy will stop whatever it's doing. And after that, it will do this task B, which is it blink the LED. Okay, so LED will blink four times. After the LED blinking four times, what happens is then the task A will continue. Okay, then the start five six until nine this is for interrupt while for polling okay this the main uh, situation here you have a task a and then you have the task b all right so this is task a here is your main programming in which you want to come from one to nine and task b you want to do the polling which is in this polling here 
you are going to to us the same task which which is you want to do LED blinky for time. So for the poly, what happen is, okay, in the middle you you doing a task A, counting one, two, three, four. Okay, suddenly what happen is you go you says that you want to do the task B. Okay, task B want to do a poly. But what happen is the task A will not stop. It will continue doing the task A. Okay, and Till it finish count number nine. After it ended task A, then it will continue to do the task B, which is blinking the LEDs four times. So that is the difference between link and interrupt. So this is the what we call here the advantage and disadvantage of interrupt and polling so interrupt efficiency of cpu means that you can use your cpu efficiently by dividing the task which time will run first which time we need the priority uh, which task will run last and if you have a priority task then you need to do that task okay immediately Compared to poly, what happened is not efficient use of CPU. Why? Because you need to finish the task A, then after that you can continue to do the task B, task C, and task A. Alright. So this one can serve many devices, which each device get attached of CPU based on the priority assigned to it. Alright. So this one for the interrupt, you can do a multitasking actually. Right. Multitasking while for polling cannot assign priority it checks all the divide in round robin fashion as i said earlier it will do the task okay uh, by what we call here okay uh, you need to finish the first task and then followed by the second task third task four seven and etc right so that's what we call it as a round robin Fashion. Okay, next is the CPU can ignore or mask a device request for service. Means that, okay, the CPU, okay, let's, for example, lah, you currently run a task A, but suddenly, okay, you are going to interrupt with a task B, but CPU can ignore the task B, okay? It says, okay, task B cannot go now. Task B cannot execute now. So what happens is the task A will continue. This, this is what we call as the ignore a device request. Alright. But for what we call here for the polling, okay, cannot ignore the device request. Okay, means that if the device are requesting to do a certain task, what happens is the CPU will continue to do a task A and then after the task A is finished then it will continue to do the task B okay there are two different things here between interrupt and only and this one here avoid tying down the CPU those the waste time can be used to perform someone some useful task compared to this one waste so much CPU time by polling device that not need the service So for a free interrupt, there must be uh, ISR, right? So what is ISR? Is ISR is interrupt service routine. Okay, since when an interrupt is invoked, micro P will run the ISR. Okay, so ISR is the task that you are going to do when you invoke the interrupt. Okay, generally for every ISR, there is a fixed location in memory that holds the address of each ISR. So the group of memory locations set aside to hold this address of ISRs are called interrupt vector table. Okay, so this is an interrupt vector table for the Atmega32 AVR. Okay, the first one here, the, okay. This from top to bottom means that the first one here this is the have a top priority 
and this is the last priority okay so preset the location here is at 0, 0, 0. okay so this is in inside your program memory actually okay so this is inside your program memory okay followed by the int0 int1 int2 then you have a counter timer counter interrupt for compare overflow and etc so this is the interrupt vector table okay and okay so recap back your flash memory so your flash memory okay you have in admega32 there are 32 kilobyte of program flash memory which is it organized as a 60k two byte words okay means that the size here all right is 60 bit right so each of these uh, words here in the memory has a unique address starting from 000 until 3FFF. Okay, you can calculate this one here uh, by using this formula. N address equal to start address plus capacity minus 1. Okay, so some memory is reserved or protected. Okay, so where is the memory that reserved and protected? Okay, so this section here and this section so anything that you write down in your program will be stored starting from address 002a until 3c00 so this is where your program your what you call your, your program will be stored inside of this flash memory okay so if you see here starting from the address 000 to 002a you see D is a reserve of in reset and interrupt vector section. Okay, what is that actually? This one. Okay, so this one will be stored inside of this reset and interrupt vector section. While another two kilobyte here, okay, using for boot flash section. Okay, so this is a recap of our flash memory or program memory inside of Artmega thirty two. Okay, so what are the steps that executing an interrupt? So how that interrupt works? Okay, so upon activation of an interrupt, the micro P goes through the following step. Okay, so this is the step that will be taken upon activating or upon activate the interrupts. Okay, first it will finish the instruction it currently executing and save the address of the next instruction to the stacks okay similar to what we already learned in uh, step pointer every time that you execute the instruction call what happen is the member uh, the micro p will take the next address after the instruction call and it will put to the stack similar to this one here every time you uh, info and, and interrupt what happened is okay the micro p will take the next address okay of the program that you are currently stop okay and put the address to your stack okay save the address of the next instruction to your stack Okay, next, jump to a fixed location in memory called interrupt sub vector table. Okay, so the interrupt vector table direct the micro P to the address of ISR. Okay, so what happened here? So it will jump to interrupt vector table. So see what type of ISR that you're going to use. Is it you want going to reset? Is it you going to do the INT request zero? INT1, INT2, and all of this interrupt vector tables here. You have so you have a lot of interrupt here. Okay, so in this class here, we only focus on this INT as well as the timer interrupt. But most of the most of the time, we'll focusing on the INT interrupt. Okay, next in this. Third step, what happened is 
microbe will start execute their ISR, those intrat service routine, until it reach the last instruction of the subroutine, called as RETI. Okay, so similar to what what we you done in the what we call step pointer. Okay, every time you see you uh, execute the call instruction and you go to your subroutine. Do that subroutine until you execute the RET. So the microbe know that you want to return from your subroutine. Sama juga lah dengan yang this one. Okay. So every time you invoke and interrupt, what happen is, okay. So you save your next instruction of your currently executed program to your step stack and go to that ISR do that ISR until you execute the RETI instruction ok so upon executing the RETI the micro P return to the place when it was interrupted ok get the PC address from the step means that after RETI is executed the program counter will take the address that already store in your stack put back to your program counter and now he the micro p know that you you need to resume to the place where it was interrupted okay let's look at this uh, example here how interrupt is executing okay so this is a code this code here written in the assembly language but in this class here we learn in the C programming but it is similar okay assembly language and C programming the way that interrupt and execute is similar okay so this is the program okay you see okay so let's see what happened when the interrupt is executed okay so first you go to this jump main Alright, okay, so alamak. Okay, we we'll start again. Alright, so starting from here, okay, this is your main program. Okay, it will jump to your main program. This is your main program, and then you initialize your stack pointer and initialize your port input output port so that it's become input output. And this one here, you are going to initialize your trap okay then you do the main program and un until here okay you already do the load i r33 put 3 to r30 load i r31 4 put 4 to r31 okay suddenly what happen here you invoke an interrupt here this is int0 interrupt okay so this the next instruction what you call it the next uh, address of the next instruction will be stored to your step pointer and this one here will go to you see it will go to this isr which is you the uh, I, int0 isr which is you are you're going to execute that interrupt service routine okay once you go to that interrupt service routine you execute the interrupt service routine so you do this the task or the program inside of your interrupt service routine so what happened here you read the port c value to r31 and then put it to r32 do exclusive or between r31 and r32 and then send out the value from r31 to port c okay now after that you execute the reti what happened is okay so this address here will be send to your program counter okay okay then now your program counter know okay we need to continue here which is this is where you currently stop okay when you invoke the interrupt so the micro p will go to your main program and resume back your main program okay so this is how the interrupts works. Okay, there are 
many source of interrupt in the area okay one of them we call it as a okay at least two interrupts set aside for each of the timers okay the first one we call it as a timer interrupt okay so timer interrupt there are two type of timer interrupt one we call it as a overflow method and the second one we call it as compare mesh method okay for the timer interrupt okay we will in the next few slide but this method overflow and compare mesh you will learn detail on the timers model okay and then we have three interrupt for external hardware input interrupt okay so int0 you have int1 and int2 so int0 is located at the port d pin number two int1 located at port d pin number three and int2 located at port b pin number two okay what is the external hardware interrupt means you every time you want to invoke the interrupt you need to press a certain switch or button okay so when you press that button or you, when you press that switch okay the micro pin know that you are going to do the external hardware interrupt next we have the serial communication usage has three interrupt the spi interrupt and the adc interrupt but in this uh, module here we are only focusing on the timers and external hardware interrupt all right so this is the alternate function of port d okay instead of using the port d as an input output port you also can use the port d as as a other things lah okay you can use it as a with the different function okay in which in this interrupt module here we on we need to focus on the pd3 and the pd2 why because pd3 and pd2 is where your int1 and int0 is located okay so in order to use the an internal external external interrupt so this interrupt you're going to use the pd3 and pd2 so recap back your omega 32 okay so in omega 32 okay we have three external hardware interrupt which is int0 int1 and int2 so int0 and int1 are located at this pin here okay pd2 and pd3 while int2 are located at this pin here okay so this is pb Okay, so you need to memorize these three pins in order to use the interrupt. Okay, so now we're going to to learn how to program the interrupt in C programming. Okay, so in the C language, there is no instruction to manage interrupt. Those need to add the following in win avr in order to manage the interrupt so the first step that you're going to do in order to write your c program for the interrupt first thing first you need to include this avr slash interrupt dot h5 okay so you need to include this file here this is the the first thing that you're going to use Okay, in order to in order to what we call here in order to do an interrupt okay next you are going to enable your interrupt initialize your interrupt okay by setting at your GICR or TIMSK registers right so if you are using the INT 
so you need to initialize at your GICR while if you're going to use the timer interrupt okay you need to initialize it at the TIM escape and at the same time you need to initialize okay your I flat in your status register okay so this is how you're going to enable the interrupt first at the interrupt register the second one in your status register which is you need to initialize your interrupt globally at your i flex okay and then after that you are going to define your isr to write an isr should read right in the following structure okay so this is your isr how you want to going to write your interrupt service routine okay first isr followed by your interrupt vector names okay this interrupt vector names here okay you need to write it correctly okay you must use the same isr name in the following table okay so let's say lah if you're going to use the int0 so this is the name that you're going to write int0 underscore vet if you're going to use the int1 this the name they are going to write int1 underscore vet okay so you need to follow this vector name okay for this interrupt service routine so let's you're going to use the int2 so just write down int2 underscore vet and then open curly brackets close curly brackets so this is your program lah. the task that you're going to you to do whenever the isr is in work right <coughs> so how to enable and disable an interrupt so upon a reset all interrupt are disabled okay none will be responded to by my copy if they are activated so in order to do that you need to enable your interrupt okay so that your micro p to respond to your interrupt request okay so how okay first thing first as i mentioned here there are two way to enable your interrupt first at your at your gicr or tmsk in your register interrupt register the second one at on your status register okay now we're focusing on the status register okay so the bit 7 in your status register responsible to enable and disable the interrupt globally okay you see here d is i okay bit 7 this is the most important in the interrupt okay so how to enable this bit high air okay to enable this bit i you can use the s e i instruction okay so means that every time you do the s e i break open bracket close bracket and semicolon here what happen is you you make your status register at bit 7 as 1 so every time you do sei what happen is this is your status register okay so the bit 7 here will be set okay means that you enable your interrupt globally okay to disable use cli so every time you going to disable your interrupt here you can use the cli so now what happen is it become zero okay so this is the first register that you're going to enable the interrupt which is at the status register and there are some io register holding interrupt and bit bit even though i equal to one okay so the second location that you're going to 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 in initialize or to enable your interrupt is at either at your timsk okay so this one here used for timer interrupt or gicr okay so gicr uh, 
need to be enabled if you're going to do to use the external hardware in truck which is INT0, INT1 and INT2 so let's look at the timer in truck first okay so this is your TIM scheme okay TIM scheme stands for timer in truck mass register okay so it also 8 bit wide okay you see here, this is, you have a TOIE0, OCIE0 until OCIE3 okay so TOIE0 okay every time you see here okay with ended with zero you know that you're going to use a timer zero okay so if you see one one b one a and one d is for timer one and when you see two at the end of your uh, bit here so this one here you know that it is a for timer okay so next for the timer we have two type of timer one is our overflow method the other one is compare mesh method okay so this t here stand for overflow okay means that you're going to use the overflow method but oc all right this one here stand for CTC which is compare mesh method okay so this this method here you will learn in the next module okay in the timer module okay and the other what we call here register that you're going to enable the interrupt call as a GICR okay GICR stand for general interrupt control register so this register belongs to external hardware interrupt okay if you're using the external hardware interrupt you need to enable this GICR there okay so this is your GICR the GICR is also 8 bit wide okay you see here the bit that you need to focus here on the these three bit here bit seven bit six and bit five in which bit seven for int1 bit six for int0 and five for int2 okay every time you put one here inside of this gicr means that you're going to use this certain external hardware interrupt contohlah if you put 100 zero, zero, okay the rest we just you know we put a zero means that now you enable int if you put 110000 zero, 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 means that you enable int1 and int0 okay if you put 111 one, one, Okay, means that you are going to use all the external hardware in which is INT1, INT0, and INT2. So, the way that you enable the interrupt will reflect to what type of interrupt, uh, external hardware interrupt that you are going to use.